The Missouri Center for Reproductive Medicine and Fertility uh, sees patients at um, all uh, along all parts of the spectrum of, of infertility. So uh, those include some who get pregnant very easily with minimally invasive therapies that really don't cost very much money to those who uh, it, we have to use our highest tech therapies. But all of those things are offered and we certainly meld our therapy to match what the patient is interested in doing and what they need. Many times patients come and they before they before they really even start to talk about their problem they tear up. It, it's, it's a very emotionally devastating problem that they come here with. It's probably some of the most difficult times in their lives and we understand that here. Usually once we start to talk about various small things that they can do to help their fertility problem, oftentimes they tell me they're very relieved that they came here and what I was going to tell them was was just so much better than what they thought that it was going to be. Well, my husband and I, after getting married, knew we wanted to start a family and thought that we would give it a shot on our own for a while, hoping for the best. And after about a year and a half of being unsuccessful, we thought that we might need some extra help. Um, they definitely have a very team-oriented group. It kind of, I guess, takes a village. And so from everybody from the nurses to the ultrasound technicians to the doctors and even the staff at the receptionist window, um, everybody's just very friendly and helpful and very calming, I think, which is nice because this can be an emotional and um, a scary time of your life. And to have those calming voices that are willing to talk to you on the telephone when you have a question and that call you back immediately, which is always very nice. And so it really helped make me feel at ease. And honestly, they're kind of people that I, I would choose to be my friends. I don't want that to sound cliche, but they're just, they're just all really, really friendly people. Well, my, my thoughts before coming, you know, and really, you know, not knowing what to expect. And of course, I think the end all being a female and wanting a family, your overall thoughts are like, oh my gosh, what if I can't have a baby? And so coming here and sitting down with the doctor, you know, for the first consultation and kind of telling him what our issues were and hearing him kind of talk through that, I was really relieved. The workup for doing for a couple who's having infertility is very straightforward. And we usually start that workup after uh, folks who are younger than 35 have been trying for a year or more without getting pregnant. Once the woman gets older than 35, and it really appears that the woman's age is more important than the man's age in this, the, uh, we begin to do the workup more quickly. So if somebody is 35 and hasn't gotten pregnant within about six months, we will start a workup. If they're over 40 and they haven't gotten pregnant within a few cycles, we'll start a workup. The basic set of testing includes testing of ovulation, so that's when an egg gets released from the ovary, testing of whether the fallopian tubes are open or not, because it's inside the fallopian tubes that fertilization takes place. And then finally, a examination of the partner's sperm to make sure that there's adequate numbers, they're moving appropriately and shaped normally. That's probably the basic fertility evaluation. The range of treatment options really depend on what the, the particular couple's issue is. So it's, it's a very individual doctor-patient decision, but there are, certain, there are certain abnormalities such as polycystic ovary syndrome where even just a, a modest amount of weight loss, 5 to 10 percent weight loss may help ovulation and then subsequently pregnancy. Um, and then certainly probably the biggest recommendation that we have for patients is to quit smoking. And that's for both male and female partners to improve their fertility. And then as far as medical therapies, we can start out very inexpensively, very safely with oral medications like Clomid um, or Clomiphene citrate. And then we have more intensive therapies like gonadotropin shots. Those are just shots that directly stimulate the ovaries to grow. And then we can get as intensive as we need to with therapies such as in vitro fertilization or IVF. So the in vitro fertilization procedure involves several steps. Um, 
from the beginning of a cycle. Uh, it's probably really about six or seven weeks. Uh, it's not equal to a menstrual cycle. Um, in the first part of the cycle, we turn off her responses to her own ovaries so that we, when we give medication, she makes multiple eggs. That takes about four weeks of very simple therapy and then about two weeks of more intense therapy where the patients are coming in about every other day uh, and taking medicines daily via injections. During that part of the cycle, we want to make sure that they're stimulating good enough but not too much. Uh, so that we do ultrasounds and do blood measurements to make sure that a patient is making several eggs. Once those eggs look to be mature, we have to do a surgical procedure, which is done as an outpatient, in which we retrieve those eggs through the vagina and put them into dishes. And then we put sperm on those eggs and then watch over the next couple of days as embryos develop out of those eggs then we can choose particular embryos to put back into the uterus. And we have the option at that time, if we have extra embryos, of freezing them so that additional cycles can be done with minimal stimulation. So after about, I don't know, maybe several months of coming here, um, we decided to start with some Clomid. And our second month of Clomid, we were pregnant with Vivian. Oh my gosh, when we found out we were pregnant, it was tears of joy. And of course I called the clinic here immediately to tell them that the pregnancy test at home was positive and they were excited for us too and couldn't wait for me to come in and do a blood test and kind of see how far along we were. So yes, lots of tears of joy and so we're very happy about that and she's almost two years old now and so now we're back because we are wanting to get pregnant with baby number two. When you come to a fertility center, uh, uh, the, we understand what you're going through. Uh, we understand that the questions that we, ans that we ask and that you're answering for us are very sensitive and we respect that. Uh, we also understand that there is a perception that all fertility treatment is very invasive and very expensive and I think it couldn't be further from the truth. The vast majority of patients who come in uh, are able to be treated with fairly quickly and fairly successfully with non-invasive and, and affordable treatments.